Hello and welcome to the second video in this series where we talk about architecture of ISVA. ISVA consists of three major components. First is the reverse proxy, also known as web seal or the policy enforcer. Second is the policy server. And the third is the LDAP server or user registry. We will talk more in detail about these components later in this video. This diagram shows you the high level overview of ISVA deployment where we can see which components are deployed in which zones. The load balancer along with the reverse proxy aka web seal are deployed in the demilitarized or DMZ zone. The load balancer is front facing and receives traffic from the internet users and forwards that traffic to the web seal. The load balancer provides high availability to the reverse proxy servers. The web seal servers in turn forwards the request for authentication and authorization to the policy servers. The policy servers being the critical component is placed in the militarized zone and receives traffic only from the web seal servers. The user registry or the LDAP servers are placed in the secured zone since these store sensitive information regarding the user. They connect with the policy server and maintains the user credentials. It facilitates the authentication mechanism. Now we talk more about the first component which is the web seal server also known as the reverse proxy. Web seal is a resource manager that protects web based information and resources. Users are routed through web seal while accessing a protected resource. Web seal acts as a reverse proxy by receiving HTTP and HTTPS requests from a web browser and delivering content from junctioned backend web application servers. It supports multiple authentication methods and can provide single sign on solutions. It integrates with the security verify access authorization service and protects the backend server resources through web seal junction technology. It also manages the fine grained access control for the local and the backend server resources. Now we talk about the second component, which is the policy server. Policy server is the key to the processing of access control, authentication and authorization requests. It maintains the master authorization database for the management domain. It provides authorization and authentication service and therefore should be placed in a secure controlled area. It defines the security policy, users, groups and resources. It also connects with the LDAP server and assists in user authentication flows. Now we will discuss the authentication flow of ISVA. Authentication is the process of identifying a user that is attempting to log into a secure domain. Requests for protected resources by unauthenticated users always result in an authentication challenge. WebSeal provides several built in authentication methods by default. WebSeal also provides the flexibility to customize the authentication mechanism. Now, the flow is like first, the user makes a request for a protected resource. Then, the policy enforcer, that is WebSeal, intercepts the request and invokes the configured authentication module for that type of authentication information to verify the user's identity. Then the user is verified against the user registry and the user credential is created. This credential is used during the authorization decisions for requests made by this user. At the last, the user authorization is performed against the authorization database. Next, we discuss about the authorization flow. The authorization process determines whether an authenticated user has the right to perform an operation on a specific resource or not. The authentication process involves the creation of a credential that describes the identity of the user. WebSeal is responsible for implementing the requested operation when the authorization is granted. An authorization service performs the decision making action on the request. Now the flow is like, first the user requests a protected resource to the web seal. Then the policy enforcer 
process uses the API to call the authorization service for an authorization decision. The authorization service performs a check on the resource. The protected object policies or the POPs are checked first. Next, the access control list attached to the object is checked against the client's credentials. Finally, POPs enforced by the resource manager are checked. Then, the decision to accept or deny the request is returned as a recommendation to the resource manager. If the request is finally approved, the web seal passes the request onto the application responsible for the resource. At the last, the user receives the result of the requested operation. Subscribe and stay tuned to our channel for the next video where we talk about federation and advanced access control modules of ISVA.